welcome back to the Wyatt Wellness Podcast. I am your co-host, Ryan Wyatt. And I am your other co-host, Tippy Wyatt. Today, we have an interesting topic yet again, and it's going to be involving wasting time, which is something that everybody is guilty of. I'm definitely guilty of it. Everybody listening (laughs) is guilty of this as well. And we can't even begin to talk about wasting time without mentioning the internet. Yes, the internet, ironically. We make a living on the internet. Yeah. Now, the internet isn't all bad. Obviously, there are tremendous uh, advantages of having the internet. It's virtually revolutionized our world, right? You can make your living on the internet. You can become famous on the internet. You have all of the knowledge combined of humanity available on the internet. As well as connecting with your loved ones, people that you have lost touch with. It makes it so much easier to connect with friends that you haven't seen in a while, right? People from high school. There's no such thing as a high school reunion anymore, apparently. You know, you could just catch up with them online. Why go to it? I mean, there is, but I'm obviously saying that you don't have to wait for 10 years to catch up with people. The internet has revolutionized communication. 100%. And it's really hard to even rewind in our minds what it was like before the internet. Like, what did we all do? I'm actually old enough that I can remember. (laughs) Before the internet was like a really big thing, you know, and there was phone calls, right? We could, we did that. Letters. Letters. I didn't do letters as much, but a lot of, a lot of phone calls. Uh, We still had text messaging at that time. I'm talking about like when I was in middle school, high school. Um, We also had television, right? So we could sit around and we could watch TV. We also had the the, uh, VHS players, right? So you could watch movies on demand. You could play video games, but it was on a console in front of the TV and it was like regular Nintendo where the games don't require you to be present for any kind of particular purpose, right? It's basically just there to entertain you for a short amount of time. In contrast to today, there's it seems like there's no shortage of things that are just trying to grab your attention on the internet. Yeah, and life before the internet was more imaginative for me. Let me just touch on that. And it was okay to be bored when you were a kid. That was just part of being a kid. You don't have to be stimulated 100% all the time. You got time to lay in your bed, look up at your walls, imagine things. And that was a beautiful time because people went outside a lot more. People played with sticks. And you. I grew up in the generation where you just go outside and you play and then you come back when it's dark. That was it. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have anything consuming you in devices. So most of my childhood was without technology. That's what I remember. And I loved it. I thought it was definitely a typical childhood. You get went outside, got dirty, digged for worms, rocks, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you got to be a kid versus being addicted to so many things. Nowadays, I see kids really addicted to things like... If they don't have it, they make their parents' life hell and they throw a tantrum type of situation. Yeah. So life before the internet was was quieter, was a lot quieter. And now it's so noisy because like you just said, everything seems to be wanting to grab your attention all the time. And that's what these apps are you know, designed to do. A lot of these social media apps are designed to retain your attention. Yeah, well, think about what what has happened, right? Over the last, let's just say 10 years, right? Because, I mean, really, we could go back even further. Yeah. Super duper smart people have been studying psychology, studying human behavior, and to find out what will drive more engagement, mm-hmm. what will keep you hooked, what will keep you looking at your phone, you know? And so that's why it gives the average person, myself included, anxiety 
to not have your phone within you know reach uh, within reach yeah you know and how did we get to this point like what is so important that's going to happen right am i going to miss a text message or respond to it in 10 minutes except you know instead of 5 seconds you know am i am i worried i'm going to not instantly get a little notification bell from some app that is trying to bring me back in you know what what is it you know i i don't really know why there is such anxiety about being separated for our phones what do you think you know that's an interesting question because i did an experiment if you've been following me and i was offline for a full year just Mm -hmm. cold turkey never announced it just went completely off the grid and i think that you know I don't know what exactly it is, but I think we are too connected. We're so connected that we're disconnected in real life. We're so connected online that we're disconnected in real life. And I don't know what it is that we think we're going to miss out. There is this thing called FOMO, F-O-M-O, fear of missing out. That's what it stands for. And I think that that's probably the majority of it. The fear of missing out, Mm. you want, you mean, it becomes almost like your thumb wants to go to these apps and i have i have a lot of stories about the year without social media and this was something that i noticed myself when i got off like i just my you know when you mindlessly scroll of your, course yes you know <laughs> you know everybody knows yeah so you just go to it your thumb your index finger it just goes to it it knows what to do and you're just kind of swiping scrolling double tapping whatever all the little gestures you do with your hands yeah and without it brings you comfort because you're comfortable with it so without it like going to the bathroom man i can't take a shit without my phone you know Mm -hmm. i'm here to tell you you absolutely can i did it for a year and (laughs) It was quiet. We used to read magazines when we were on the toilet. We used to do all kinds of other things. But with being without it was just so incredibly interesting. And so that's where people, you know, you spend more time on the toilet because you're on your phone. It's not because you actually have this massive bowel movement that you've been, you know, pushing out for 30 minutes. Let's be honest. You could do your business in five, 10, whatever, but you're there so much more. I don't know all the stats with it. So forgive me. I'm just, I just know for sure that you definitely spend more time on the toilet if you bring your phone. That's what I know. Oh, absolutely. I mean, (laughs) imagine if you went to the toilet without your phone, you'd be anxious to get out of there. You'd be like, geez, this is, this is horrible. Yeah. I want to get to my phone. Yeah. I'm getting I'm going to deuce because I want to get out of here (laughs) to get to my phone. That's my motivation to push this out quicker. Or when you like really, really got to go and your phone's like at 1% and it's like, it's like, oh no, that's Yeah. You're part of the 1%, 2% club, I call them, because I know people that literally are always on 2% and I don't know why. But anywho, yeah, there's, it's caused us to be more anxious about our time which is really interesting we don't really relax through it and talking about a year without social media my mind just got really curious again i became very imaginative again and it reminded me of my childhood just being curious about things walking around curious about people places and things and we're so fixated on our phones and we're zombies texting and we're not looking up and we're not looking around that we don't wonder about maybe our neighbor, you know? Yeah. Well, think about how many moments slip by because we're distracted. Yeah. Because we're wasting time. And it's it's very interesting because we're, we're talking about a lot of health and wellness type subjects here on this podcast in order to extend the amount of good time that we have in our life. Ironically, at the same time, it's super easy and tempting to just waste it on something that isn't providing you any kind of benefit or value. Now, somebody could say, well, oh, it's entertainment. Yeah, okay, let's let's run with that. Well, if it's entertainment, is what at what cost are you are you getting that entertainment, right? Did you get your homework done? Did you do everything you needed to do for your job? 
you know, how much time did you spend with your kids if you have any? What about your pets if you have any? You know, do you have a significant other? Do you have goals in your life that you did not spend time on because of this quote unquote entertainment, Mm -hmm. you know, that you were getting either through your phone, it's probably the most common. Uh, There's a lot of people in the gaming world, you know, with all their different platforms. But there's so many more examples of things that rob us of our time. Now, I remember this quote way back, and I don't remember who who I should attribute it to. But basically, um, if you if you enjoyed it, it wasn't wasted time, mm. right? I don't think I agree with that. Be- Why not? Because you can do things that are enjoyable in the moment. And yet, if you would have invested that time somewhere else later on in, down the line, you would have much greater pleasure. So really, you did yourself a disservice by choosing the short-term pleasure. And I don't want to fault the individual too badly because most people probably aren't aware of the amount of addiction that every single person that I know has, including me. Yeah. Right? And the the weird thing is, is that we only have one pleasure center in the brain. It's called the dopamine system, right? And that is what causes addictive behaviors to happen. And that's why you can be addicted to so many weird things. You know, you could be addicted to uh, your your games, your phones, your sports, your celebrity gossip, your food, your... It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Whatever that is, it's because we're craving a hit of dopamine and we Mm. keep searching, you know, and that's why we'll mindlessly scroll and waste so much time. We're looking for just that dopamine hit, you know, that perfect meme, that perfect video, that perfect little TikTok, whatever it is. And, you know, it could be hours. Yeah. It absolutely can be. And, you know, I know people that wake up and they go straight to their phone and then it's three hours in and then you're just like, what did I do on my Saturday morning that I'm off? I just spent three hours looking at 15 seconds of stuff that is not valuable. Now, I like value in my content. So I like to know that I'm going to get better from it in some sort of way. I leave feeling better. And like you said, the whole, if you enjoy it, it wasn't a waste of time. I mean, we can go back and forth on that. But I give you an example. A lot of people maybe can relate to this. When I was um, in college, I had a great time. Let me just say that. And a lot of nights were a lot of drunken nights, weekend nights. And then you then become hungover the next day. And then you waste your whole entire day because you're hungover and you feel like shit. Mm Mm-hmm. So I enjoyed it in the short term, but in the long term, I'm like, man, I'm lagging. I have an, I just completely wasted another day. But did I enjoy it? Then it wasn't a waste of time. But then I'm also wasting time on this Sunday because I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, there's some irony in that for sure. Yeah, there certainly is a lot of irony yeah. in this. And once you've spent that time, because we have discretion of how we spend our time, whether we're going to spend it, you know, working. Intentionally. Yeah, intentionally. Yeah. Intentionally, we we get to choose, right? And so that choice could be in the form of a Netflix bender, right? Where I'm going to watch Netflix and catch up on this, you know, show, whatever it is. The latest and the greatest. Yeah, Squid Games, I think it is. That's the hottest thing right now. Yeah. I'm just going to binge watch all that right now. Yeah. Before I know it, 10 hours is gone. And what what value did I get from that? I'm never getting that time back. Mm. You know, what about with our our son? You know, how much time would that have meant to him if I would have done something? You know, if I would have taken you somewhere, if I would have taken both of you out somewhere, if I would have partitioned that up a little bit more responsibly, right? Maybe I watched one episode of Squid Games and then moved on to other things like I did my workout and I did, uh, you know, a couple hours worth of work and I, you know, yeah. so on and so forth. I could still get it all done, but that's not typically how it happens. It's just these really long phases of sedentary 
doing nothing, wasting our very incredibly precious time. Yeah, our time is our most valuable currency. And we all know about money. Once you spend it, you can earn it back. But what's ironic about time is you can't earn it back. I think the only thing that really enables you to have, like you said, more time and more quality time is going to be your health. It's going to be your wellness. And so we like to invest in that more than anything because it's going to give us a better return on our investment. In business terms, it's a ROI is what we call it. Yeah. And I do think that it could be allocated much better, much more effectively. And maybe that comes with a sense of purpose. And if you don't have a lot of purpose in your life, maybe it's easier for you to just go off the rails and go off that bender and watch 12 hours of whatever it is that you want to watch. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a purpose and you don't have goals, it's easier to look at other people achieve their goals and, you know, watch movies and vicariously live through it or escape in some sort of way. Because a lot of people see it as an escape from their own reality. And maybe your own reality is not that great and you just want to escape from it, right? I, I would agree with that. And and what is the what is the solution to this though? Because I can totally see how this becomes this sort of negative mm-hmm. I'm sorry, a positive feedback loop where basically you're not very satisfied with your current situation and then you become depressed, you become less likely to take action to improve yourself. Therefore, you you know, it's kind of like this, this spiral yeah. that gets out of control. And at what point do you say, I've wasted a big part of my life. I regret all these things that I've done. And, or maybe you never reach that point. Maybe maybe you your reality shapes to your current behaviors. Like, okay, well, this is what I do. Um, quick little side note. Back when I paid attention to a lot of sports, mm. right? I thought that this was the greatest thing at the time. And I'm talking about NFL Red Zone, where basically you can watch all the coolest like happenings right then, instantly, for all the games going on. And there's for no football. breaks. Yeah, for football. Yeah. American football. Yeah. The I would sit on the couch... And I would just drink beer all day watching Red Zone. I remember those days. Yeah. And I think about <laughs> think about it now. And I'm like, okay, look, I know that that's something that I went through. But I would never do that again today. You know, that was, that was back then. And I've grown out of that. And I'm trying to think about like how I, how I went about doing that. Can I pause you there for a second Yeah, and really put into perspective for people that have never watched sports or they don't know about football? So Sundays are incredibly popular for football in America and they... In the fall. In the fall 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 time. Yeah, the football season time. And it's from 9 a.m. to about like 8, right? Like there's like usually an evening game. I mean, we're talking about all day long. Yeah like 10 plus hours, yeah. right? That's what I'm I'm trying to get to. That's how much time that you spent on Sunday from 9 a.m. cracking open the six pack and you could really drink yourself into oblivion all day long with your buddies mm-hmm. and eat junk food and talk smack to each other about everything. Playing fantasy football yeah, playing fantasy, on top of that. Yep. And you go back and forth all day long and then... Next thing you know, you're drunk on a Sunday and it's about 8.30, 9 o'clock, right? And you spent all day doing that. That's what typically a sport fanatic does. That's very an easy picture to imagine. If mm. you've done that before, it's, you know, you get with your buddies, you do all this all day long. That's what I wanted to kind of emphasize. I mean, you're talking about how much you spent on it. That's really what you, what you did all day. It is. Yeah. It is. I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I'm talking about, you know, almost 12 hours yeah. of watching a game being played and drinking alcohol. Yeah. You know, I'm not even participating in the game. I'm simply a viewer right now. It feels like I'm participating to me, but in reality, I'm not. Yeah. Right. So now I, I've kind of moved away from watching sports. Now, I love playing sports you know I'll, 
I, I love to get out there and do it myself. But as far as as just watching it, it's not it just doesn't have the appeal that it used to. And, you know, I, I'm actually quite grateful for that. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to watch the Super Bowl. I always like watching the Super Bowl, but you know, I'm not going to carve time out. I just don't have that kind of time. I have I have already allocated my time in advance of what I need to get done. I I'm never thinking about, okay, I've got nothing on my schedule cuz that never happens. <laughs> nothing on my plate. That never happens. You know, I've always got something. Yeah. And so there is no room for me to waste, you know, an entire Sunday. That'll never happen again, I feel like. Yeah. I, I, under what circumstances will that happen? Hostage? <laughs> I mean, okay, maybe if I was like somewhere on vacation and sure. my literally, literally what I was supposed to be doing is just relaxing and vegging out, maybe that's the only time. But okay. that that's such a rare instance that I won't even... And when we're on vacation, we like to do things. Yeah. And we like to relax as well. But yeah, that is a typical time waster in my opinion now. And there's no hate on anybody that loves sports and sports fanatic. But just consider the alternative. What can I be doing with my time instead of this? Does yeah. this bring me any type of value in this? I mean, those I, are questions that we, we ask ourselves all the time about time. Well, I think it goes back to the whole value versus entertainment, yeah. right? You can be temporarily in, entertained, which it is. But after that, well, well, now what? You know, and you got to have a good answer for that question. Well, now what? I spent that time. What do I have to show for it? You know, it's a little bit more difficult. I think that there's a lot of other things that keep us distracted on the internet as well we have to acknowledge social media's complete takeover of our attention spans we kind of grazed on it in the beginning but there's one thing that we didn't touch on which is going to be conflict oh my gosh yeah and and that's why i wanted to circle back to social media because i'm guilty of this which is engaging in online arguments and the utter stupidity of doing such a thing because one, it takes so much of your time and energy to one, get upset at somebody on the internet, which is dumb to do. Two, then you have to formulate a response that uses, that uses energy as well. And then you got to send it and see what, what the response is, right? And so it's, it's the stupid online bickering. And here's the thing, right? How many times, and I'm talking to everybody here, has somebody said something to you in an argument on the internet that made you change your mind? It's probably pretty rare, right? Most of the time, we feel that it's our job to correct that person's wrong thinking. But they feel the exact same way. That's the thing, you know, so it's it's a completely futile endeavor yeah. that all it does is it takes your time, it steals your happiness, and it gets nothing done. It gets absolutely nothing done. Nobody has a plaque on the wall that says, I'm making the world a better place by engaging in online arguments, you know? Ever. Totally, totally. And not just the argument of it. What if you engage in reading comments i'm guilty of this it's a hot topic i want to know what people are saying about it so i get into the comment section and here i am reading like 20 comments i'm like okay stop stop tippy yeah this is getting a little bit out of hand and then you start to read replies to the comments and all these things and it just is like this is getting me nowhere i gotta stop this so even if you don't engage in the online argument reading it is just as bad it really you, is. Because you're mean, wasting time either you're, way. You're consuming drama. Yeah. And I think that, that human beings are kind of hardwired to be attracted to drama. We sure are. Because, I mean, we're, we can't stop watching the news, one, right? We can't stop engaging in negative stuff on social media. We can't seem to stop caring about 
celebrities, that's always one that I've been curious about, like, because a lot of people follow celebrities. And You're not into that. No, and I'm not into it. And I yeah. just never understood the appeal about knowing some knowing everything about somebody who doesn't even know that you exist. Well, you like music, you like bands, you like, you know, that type of stuff, but it's not like you're obsessed with it and wanting to know what they wear or, or if they won an award or something like that. No, I like music and bands because of the art. Yeah. Around it, you know, and that's that's an entirely different podcast about, you know, the art of music and different <laughs> kinds of art and stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, we'll get into that podcast. Yeah, but maybe not. You do enjoy the output of the artists. Absolutely. You enjoy the output. You just don't enjoy like to know what they wore on a I, Monday at 7 a.m. Yeah, you know? I, I don't need to know who they yeah. were, you know, photographed with on what at what restaurant. Yeah. You know, it's like, how relevant is this to my life? Yeah, you've always been really good about that. I have to say everybody has their vices. But that's everybody not one does. of them. That's not one of them for you, for sure. No, no. Now, I am guilty of something else, which is stupid video games. And it sucks because I am extremely addicted to them. And I got a quick story about when I was in college. You're okay. spilling all your laundry I today. I know. I know. There we go. Okay, here we go. I think it was 2008, 2009. But basically, I was starting college, and I had a full-time job, right? 40 hours, and it took me out of town as well. Uh, but fortunately, it was one where I could set my own schedule, like different routes. So I'd, I'd have to travel all over the state, basically, and I was doing 12 to 15 credits. So I remember at the time, World of Warcraft was the game to play. And this is an enormous time commitment. You know, like you can't just log on for 10 minutes and okay, bye. No, it's, it's we're talking about a couple hours. And then if you've got other people counting on you to be there and you got to do like this big kind of group raid, then you're looking at like four or five hours. And I remember after one of these particular binges that I did, I mean... It, it, I must have been online for six, seven hours straight. And I got up and I took my headphones off and my ears were hot and I like had to stretch and I'm like, this is horrible. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I haven't done anything for school. And so I, I had to make a decision right then and there. I was like, I'm either going to uninstall World of Warcraft from my computer or... I'm going to go to college. Like it literally came down because I couldn't stop working. Right. I had to support myself. So, I mean, clearly I went, I went to the army for this college money. Yeah. So I had to just get rid of the game, you know, but other games that I've been addicted to, you know, like games on my phone. Now I don't even like games on my phone unless it's like something that I can just pop. Like if I'm on the toilet, something that doesn't require <laughs> A lot of time commitment is just like something to keep me entertained in the short term. You know, that's like, that's so much different than how it used to be. But like you said, everybody has their vices of things that they spend an enormous amount of time on. You know? Absolutely. Gaming is very time consuming. Why do you think gaming is so popular? It's you know, all around the world, you have these gaming channels, you watch people play games. My yeah, goodness. That's, that's the thing now with the, with the whole esports. Yeah. I didn't think that this was going to take off. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah. Like, well, how could people just sit there, not even play the game and watch people play games? Well, it's just the same thing as sports. You're not yes. playing football, but you're watching <laughs> people throw the football and then you're judging them on how they do it. Yeah. That's just what you do. That was a do. stupid move. Are you kidding me? Bah, 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 That's bah, a terrible bah. call. Yeah, whatever. You just get riled up about it. Yeah. You know? That's exactly the same thing. So, I mean, it's the same concept. So, it took off. Yeah, it, it really did. Uh, I wish I would have invested in Twitch back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> Regrets. We're just going to try to profit off of people wasting their time. Yeah. yeah I, I. But you know what we've done, though, in our house is we've taken a lot of measures to reduce the 
the amount of distractions that we have because yep you, you know we're both self-employed there is nobody that is going to fire us there's nobody that's going to check in and make sure that we're doing our work you know like basically if it doesn't get done then it just doesn't get done it's on us and it's on us you know it's 100 percent accountability you know and, for sure and that means that if we fail in our endeavors it's our fault and if we are successful then it's our fault you know and that's that's a really powerful motivator and what we did is we had a tv but when our son was going to be born we decided to donate that tv to one of our friends and the whole purpose was we didn't want him our son to basically be addicted to television and we didn't want to use that as a babysitter as well I totally get it. I got a lot of more empathy for parents as a parent. For sure. It is super easy and tempting to be like, okay, I just got to get these things done. Here, watch whatever show that the kid wants to watch. Coco Melon's hot right now. Yeah, Coco Melon, Bluey, you know, like all these all these yeah. things that um that are available. You know, that's that's not something that we wanted to have be a big part of our of our kids live. So what we did is we got a projector instead. So the projector is really nice because one, you can't use it during the day. It's just too bright downstairs where we have it set up. And we only use that thing like maybe once a week for like maybe two hours at a time. You know, so it's cut down on the temptation just to use this mindless entertainment. Because let's face it, I mean, how much value do you get from TV? Probably not much, you know, besides the entertainment value. Yeah, that was something that we really discussed because we knew that it was there it's gonna be tempting to use it so let's just get rid of it cold turkey and i personally ryan can attest i'm not a tv person i've never been a tv person mm -mm. i've never been addicted to tv it's just not something i do or i've ever done it's just not that's just not my thing so why have it if it's not going to be something that i have you know i see value in absolutely and everyone told me once you become a mom you're going to want to use it you're going to want and hey, it's which so is much... true. Yeah, of there's course. been times when it was like, oh man, we just need to we just need to keep him sure. distracted. Absolutely. While we get something and here's done. the thing: the hard thing is to, like I said, be disciplined and be present and engage in it and do other activities and so forth. And he sees TVs. We go out to restaurants, you know, relatives' homes. They have it. It's not that we're trying to hide it from him, like shelter him from no. the world. That's not the point. The point is, in our household, it's not the norm. That's it, you know? Yeah. That's how we see it as, you know? And I think that there's so much more things that are exciting for him looking around. And I, a lot of people tell me, like, hey, you know, he doesn't actually want to watch the TV. He's more interested in the things around him, the lamp, whatever, you know. He, yeah, the, he the goes stick to. in the dirt. Yeah, he's more outside, interested in the he's, things he's around starting him. starting to, you know, explore yeah. on his own more. He's Absolutely. That age, so. And that's the foundation that we do want to set, just not having these dopamine hits where if he doesn't get that type of technology, that he's going to just raise hell and that's not what we want and i don't want to have to do a screen fast situation it's more so the opposite like you get it on maybe a flight or something like that mm -hmm. right you get you look forward to going the flight and you know it's a, you know some 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 kids don't look forward to going on flights because they got to sit still and they know that when they go on a flight that they get the entertainment in front of them so they want to sit still they want to go on the flight and they want to behave right it's kind of like the opposite that's I'm going off on a tangent, but you get what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Not ha proliferating that addiction. Yeah, and I think that we would all be a lot better off if we actively tried to remove distractions. You know, because you did go on that social media fast for a full year, cold turkey. Cold turkey, absolutely, and mm -hmm. it changed my perspective on time. I looked at time completely different still do and when you know sundays would be the stats day i would get a stat on my phone 
about how much screen time that I had throughout the week. And mm -hmm. when I was offline, we're talking about one, two hours, like it was just text messages, maybe to take pictures or whatnot, mm -hmm. to actually communicate with people that I care about in my life. And yeah, that was pretty much it. You just used it for just the basic stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was that. And my walking app, I walked a thousand miles during pregnancy. I didn't have my phone. I listened to a lot of valuable things that I thought, you know, can help me with my pregnancy, my birth, you know, family, motherhood, and all those things. I found that I was more intentional with my time and I found things that were more um, that I could invest in that gave me a return on my investment. So I was I wasn't I wasn't comparing myself to anybody. I still don't do that. That's just not something that I engage in. It's like I'm doing my own thing. And if people like it, great. If people don't, it's not a big deal. Yeah. And you can move you can move forward to other people that you may you may like more. Not a big deal. Uh, so question about this. Yeah. How how did it how did it feel? How did you feel during this time when we didn't have these constant distractions and you had a lot more time at your discretion. You know, ironically, I felt like my thoughts were my thoughts. And I know that sounds weird to say, but sometimes when we see things online, we read things, it lingers in our mind and it becomes, it's, it's a sprout in some sort of way. Like these thoughts in my head whatever is going on are original and it's not inspired by anybody else. Nothing was inspired by anything else. It was completely 100%. I'm going to refer to myself in third person tippy, you know, original tippy thoughts. So it wasn't generated by something I saw that I wanted to do on TikTok, you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't like I saw a fridge hack. So I did it. And you probably may have saw the video on it on, you know, YouTube. I saw that and I was like, oh, it inspired me to do that. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But what I'm trying to say is my thoughts were not inspired by anything that I saw from anybody or, you know, any, anything online. It was just, hey, these are just original thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I felt more free and I felt less, um, less pressure less pressure to be a certain something, to say a certain something, to show up. 2020, there was a lot of pressure, a political pressure. There was a lot, a lot of judgment about a lot of things. You know, oh, I don't want to go into it, but you, if you know, you know. And yeah. there was a lot of pressure. It's like, well, you have a platform, you have a pressure to do this, to do that, you know. And I never want to feel pressured to do anything that I don't want to do. So... Going offline cold turkey was the was one of the best decisions, and I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about us. I learned a lot about the next chapter I was going to embark in, which is parenthood. Which no one, there is no perfect manual to do this thing. You know, it just no, there, there's it nothing. Doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So yeah, and listen. You're going to have to, it's going to be around. The internet's going to be around. It's one of the biggest wastes of time, but it's also one of the best innovations. And I'll say that right now. And it's changed a lot of lives for the better. I will say that absolutely without a doubt. Well, I, I love to leverage a lot of the benefits yeah. of the internet. Obviously, we're broadcasting yeah. over the internet. How awesome is that? You know, um, I love going down the rabbit holes and having research papers mm -hmm. on the internet. You know, I I probably read probably probably about five or six research papers in the past week. And then I went and looked at all the references. And it's so amazing that I don't have to go to a university and scour a library for for all of this stuff. You know, it's it's absolutely incredible. And so we can we can choose to use the good mm -hmm. right the the knowledge that's available to us even you know i wouldn't consider that a waste of time if, but we could i don't think that that's what most people do unfortunately no i i know a lot of people waste a lot of time on there because it's entertainment you know it's fun to look at you know, people get hurt and laugh at them and then, you know, pranks or whatever it is. They're, they're just so much entertaining stuff and it's so tempting to not look at it. Yeah, but do you know what breaks my heart is when people are actively 
doing this and they're engaging with other things on their phone when they're with people that they love and care about. Oh, yeah. That was a big thing in our relationship. One of the first few dates, I remember there was internet when we first dated and Ryan was like, you know, can you not be on your phone? I was like, hey, he, he asked and yeah, I could not be on my phone. I just would like that. Okay, cool. He wants more of me and that's okay. Let's put our phones away. So when we are eating, we really make it a priority to just eat and talk and engage in each other. Yeah. I, and I think that that's a good practice for us. Definitely. The the whole meal time, family time, no phone time is something that I've always enjoyed with you, you know, and that's something that I want to also have with our kids as well you know that that we don't need to bring devices to the table because this is our time together you know like everybody gathers around food you know i don't want one person to come get food and then go to their room and eat it by themselves to watch tv yeah to watch tv or yeah. go to the, you know, living room by themselves because the show or whatever. And it's like no one talks to anybody and everyone's doing their own thing and eating. How, you know, how common is that? I've seen it. I've seen it a lot All, of times. I, it, it's more common to see that than it is to see no phones on the table. Yeah. And everybody talking. Right. Yeah. It seems like that is the that's the rare thing now to see that. And I, I see that all the time. And it really does break my heart. It's like. How much time do you have to hang out with your friends? You know, yeah. probably probably not as much as you'd like. But you're both going to hang out. You're going to be in the same vicinity. You're going to be sitting across from each other, both literally on your phones, dinking away on whatever app you're on. Yeah, and kind of going back to what you asked about the social media thing, one thing I realized too, not even like how I felt, one thing I realized too, how much time I wasted on my phone looking at photos like oh this is not i don't like this i don't like that kind of critiquing it this is the one i like favoriting this favoriting that and just constantly you know trying to retake a photo when i was offline for a year it was just like okay five minutes tops if i get a shot i get a shot if i don't then it wasn't meant to be it's not a big deal let's move on and now when i do do my like lifestyle shoots it's really quick it's so quick compared to what it was before because I don't want to waste my precious time on this particular shot like it's not that important it's not that important I want to spend my time with my family because another thing I realize and I get emotional thinking about this actually is that our time like we talk about how precious our time is and how much we have to be intentional with our time our son is about to turn one I only have 18 summers with him until he's an adult. That's it. I get teary talking about this and you might hear it a little bit in my voice because 18, that's it. 18 summers until he's a grown adult and he can do whatever he wants to do, move out, do, you know, that's it. I only have 18 summers and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, he's turning one and I have 17 left. And that puts it into perspective so much. When you think about it like that and when you realize that you don't get the same moment twice in life, then you realize the value of a time, Mm -hmm. you know, of time. Could you never get the same moment twice? I think that that's an amazing example, you know, and if if you don't have kids, don't worry, you have parents. So let's 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 use this and use it the other way. Right. Our parents are getting older. How many more times are we going to see them? If you don't live close to your parents, maybe you only see your parents, you know, once a year. During the holidays. Every six months. Yeah. Right? You know, it, it, it. let's say that you see them once a year, which hopefully you see them more than that. You know, what if, what if they pass away in the next 10 years? That means you only saw your parents 10 more times. Oh, my gosh. 10 times to see your parents before they pass is a very sobering thing to think about right and yet we squander all of our time even when we're with them like so say we see them during the holidays well how much of that time do we spend posting on facebook and seeing what everybody else was doing for their 
sweater christmas sweaters on instagram you know but instead of actually being there being present soaking up every single moment with these people that aren't going to be around with us you know for for a long period of time you know it's, it's a depressing sobering thought but i'm trying to instill the urgency in everybody listening like hey we think we have time we think we do that's buddha's famous quote and Buddha lived, you know, what, thousands of years ago? The problem before is... Before the internet? The problem is we think we have time. We think we do. That's his quote. Oh, I have time. I'm just going to put that off. I'm going to call my mom later. I'm mm-hmm. going to talk to my sister later. Yeah. I'll just I'll just follow my dreams later, you know? Yeah, you know? I'll just go after it. I'll just start that whatever it is I want to start that business we think we have that time you know and and it's like that tim mcgraw song you know it's live like you were dying yeah yeah what you know i i love that song so much because you could get some news that changes everything you know and now all of a sudden spending 12 hours you know on a sunday drinking beer isn't going to be as attractive of a prospect because you know that that is it's it's wasting the little time that you have left you know and if we all knew when we were going to die then we'd probably spend our time a little more wisely and we wouldn't engage in these you know futile online arguments we may not binge watch that entire season of whatever show you want to watch. You know, we may not be paying such close attention to what celebrity dissed another celebrity. You know, we would probably put our phones down. We would hold our children more. We would walk our dogs more. We would call our parents to say, I love you more. You know, all these things that we would do. You would if forgive. We just yeah, there's no there's yeah. no point in holding on to 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 hate and negative emotions yeah. and resentment and holding a grudge. It that never that never hurts the person that you feel that way towards. It only hurts you. Mm-hmm. You know, and how much time again, time are yep. you gonna waste holding on to that? You know, it doesn't give you strength. It takes your strength away. And, you know, that's that's a whole nother topic here of forgiveness, which I think we should probably do a podcast about in the future. Um, but our time is is precious. It's critical. And we just don't know when it's going to run out. We don't know. No one knows. It's the biggest question mark. And yeah, I think that another question that I want to ask if you're watching this on YouTube maybe comment in the comment section if you knew that you only had x amount of time would you live your life differently than what you are doing right now and i think most people would say yes most people would say yes definitely they would because it puts that perspective i mean that song tim mcgraw live like you were dying if you'd never heard it please you know put it on it the lyrics they mean something every lyric means something and it's a it's a fun song to listen to and it's so so it hits home it hits it puts perspective like no other about time Mm -hmm. and i you know i I look back and all the times that i just wasted and hey you know it's about not it's not life's not about being perfect it's about learning from your mistakes and growing from it yes and i've grown a lot from a lot of mistakes, a lot of things that I've taken for granted, a lot of things that I waste in my life, so many of them. And we're real people having these real conversations because we hope that these stories can inspire you to, you know, bring more value, bring more intentions into your life. That way you can live a fulfilled life. If you live a life of intentions, I think it leads, in my opinion, it leads to a life of fulfillment. And not a life of regrets. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, we all have regrets. That's another topic in itself. I feel like we could go into regret wellness and I don't even know how to spin that. But I think everybody has regrets, whether they say that they don't or not. It That's not true. People do have regrets, but it's okay to have regrets. You just learn from it. So you don't do it again. Yeah. Those regrets remind us that we don't want to spend, again, our time doing whatever it is that we regretted. 
So, um, yeah, we really, we really dived into a lot of things that wasted our time. And we definitely don't want to waste your time with this podcast. Every time we put out an episode, we hope that you take something away from it. Whether you agree or disagree, that's not, that's not the point. Take what you want, leave what you don't. That's always the case with our podcast. Absolutely. And what, what means the most to us is when you share this podcast with somebody that you know or that you think would really benefit from hearing it. And that means more to us than a like. It means more to us than a, a subscribe, a download. You know, getting that message out is, is absolutely paramount. Now, if you want to leave us a review on wherever you heard this, whether it be you know, Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or Google Podcasts, you know, of course we're going to appreciate that, you know, and, and we just want to thank you so much for tuning in and supporting us and supporting Wyatt Wellness. It really is our mission to bring your, your health and wellness to the forefront instead of being on the back burner. And that's why we really wanted to start this company is to help people and to not only that, but help grow ourselves too. It's, it's a constant thing that you have to work on. And we've put ourselves in a situation where we can't just slide backward now. You know, we're on a mission and we have to live the mission and we have to lead the example. And I think about that when I'm tempted to eat something or waste some time. It's like, no, this is not who I am anymore. You know, we become an idea that we have and we we strive to to meet that you know by setting those standards you know and i want the audience to join in you know i don't want you to be passive listeners you know there's there's lots of stuff you could spend your time with uh, other distractions other time wasters and i hope that you don't think that our our podcast is a time waster hopefully it's a gigantic value to you so again thank you so much um, if you haven't already, make sure you go to our website, www.wyatt-wellness.com. Sign up for the Wyatt Super 7 because really that's your cheat sheet to getting you started on your wellness journey. And it's also a subscription to what's coming ahead. And we have so many things in the pipeline. We say it a lot and we are excited and we can't wait to share it with you and we have to refrain ourselves from talking about it because too much yeah we're here talking yeah and so sign up for our mailing list guys there's so much stuff that's coming down the pipeline like we said if you made it this far your time is so valuable to us and my goodness do i appreciate you spending it here with us today i just want to say that from the bottom of our hearts thank you thank you Thank you. We have so, so we have so much to celebrate in our lives. We're so grateful that we get to do this. And it's because of you that we get to do this. So please know that we don't take that for granted one bit. And with that being said, everything is in the description box below on YouTube. And also, if you're listening on anything else, the description of this podcast, you're going to find all of our handles to all of our social media, your online environment matters a lot so make sure you are following people that are not wasting your time that are giving you value in return so please guys remember to stay connected to stay well and we'll see you and we'll um, speak to you in the next episode